No, God, please, no, 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 no! Okay, I haven't had to do a video on this topic for quite some time, and I'm honestly, thank goodness, because as much as you guys like me ranting about this sort of thing, it does, it drives me nuts. It really does, okay? It's about the rating system on IMDb. Now, when I sit down to, to like, watch a movie to review, I either find it myself, okay, or I get, like, a poster or, you know, and some, some background info sent from the director or the producers, or I get you guys suggesting it, okay? But a lot of times, I don't really investigate a movie until after I watch it. All right, such is the case with this movie. I just saw that it was coming available. I sat down and watched it. I had certain thoughts in my head about the flick. And then I started doing research. I went on IMDb. That's where I always go first, just to get characters' names and who played them and the director and some just stuff to talk about, okay, when I do the review. But the one thing that always catches my eye is the fucking IMDb rating, all right? And it, it happened again at the time of me reviewing this movie, okay, it is right now sitting at an 8.1. And I'm thinking to myself, as soon as I saw that, 8.1 out of 10, for this fucking movie, they're upvoting it. Absolutely. Now, I expected just to see, you know, maybe like 30 to 50 to 60 votes, and that was it, okay, because it's relatively new. Uh-uh. This movie has over a 1,000 votes on it that are either 8s, 9s, or 10s. Now listen, <laughs> you know me, I keep it real and I don't hold any punches back in my reviews. There is no fucking way this movie is an 8, 9, or a 10. This movie isn't even a 7, probably not even a 6, okay, if I'm being honest. And it drives me insane, okay? And now they must have had like some screenings for this movie or something where they've asked people to, to vote, to give it a good vote. To help, you know, and I get it. And I'm not saying don't watch this movie because I know these guys want to sell their movie so they can make some money off it and maybe make another movie. I get it. I totally get it. But they're lying to the fucking audience, the mass audience that's going to come to this when it gets released wider and they're going to see this. All I'm saying is, is that the bozos that gave this eight, nines or tens, for the most of them, there might be, you know, 10% of those people, and it's mostly family and people involved in the flick that will give it that. Prefer Listen, they're just upvoting it. They absolutely are, okay? And, and mark my words, okay? Keep an eye on this film, all right? Because it's sitting right now at an 8.1. I guarantee you, within a month to two months that this movie, after it's been released and more people get to watch it, I guarantee you it's going to level out probably around a five and a half and that's where it's going to sit because you're going to get the idiots that are going to downvote it, giving it zeros and ones. And this, this movie is not a zero or a one or a two or a three. It's, it's just right in the middle. Okay. It's like a five between a five and a six out of 10. Oh. But for the noobs that come on here and want to learn about this flick or, or see what it's all about, if they should watch it, don't go to the rating system, go to, go to some more generalized reviews like Rotten Tomatoes and stuff. And, and just, Kind of educate yourself on a movie before you sit down to the side you want to, you know, pay to watch it. I mean, it's only five bucks, so I mean, it's not like you're, you're, you're dropping a lot of cash to go rent it. But it's still, and this movie isn't terrible, okay, but it's, it's, it's not that good. It, 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 it is in some parts, but for the majority of this movie, it's, it's just fucking boring. And the trailer, it's one of these trailers that really are kind of edited fairly decent. But what they do is they take all the best parts of the movie and put it in the trailer. So when you go to watch the movie, there's nothing new there for you to see. And that's unfortunately the case with this movie, those who walk away. Sadly, at the end of this movie, you're going to walk away and never think again about this flick. I, I guarantee it. But let me read the synopsis. After Max and Avery meet on a social media app for a first date, they end up at a haunted house only to realize the trauma they share may either save them or erupt into an unforgettable nightmare. Okay, well, basically, the, our two main characters are Max and Avery. They meet online. They decide to go out on a first date. 
And that's the first act of this. The, the first act of this movie is them kind of meeting up, and then they're walking to the theater because they want to go see a screening of Evil Dead. Now, I will say some of the cool things in this movie are these long, long, no take, no breakaway shots that they have, and this happens right off the hop in the first act. I, I think I, I counted it to be twelve or thirteen minutes long. It's just them at their start point. And they're just walking and talking, you know, down the sidewalks, down the streets to get to this theater. And the camera never breaks from them once. Sometimes it like, you know, moves in for close-ups on, on Avery, sometimes on Max. But the conversation flows. For the most part, it, it feels real. I, I can only imagine that the majority of this conversation was ad-libbed. And they did a fantastic job of kind of that, you know, that awkward kind of first date you know, trying not to say the wrong thing sort of thing. Like I was, I, I appreciated that, especially for such a low budget horror movie, because a lot of times, and I'm just being real, the acting in low budget horror movies is fucking terrible. Okay. But I tell you, I didn't have any problems with, with the actors in, in this movie for the most part. Okay. There's some other, you know, co-stars in this movie that are acting isn't very good, but for Max and Avery, it was fine. It was fine. Okay. They get to the theater, there's been a bomb threat called into it, so they can't go see the movie, okay? And then this is where the movie kind of took, started to take a downward slide for me because Avery changes and you can see, not panic, but a concern on her face, which gets more and more because she's trying to coax him in to going to this supposed haunted house, okay? Because now they can't go to the theater which is kind of suspicious, but we, they do show the theater and that there's an actual bomb threat. But I mean, anybody can call that in, but it's just her, the way her character changes, how she's almost got this desperation on her now because she needs to get him and she'll do anything to lure him into this haunted house, which is fine. It's all character building. I get it. It's when they get to the supposed haunted house where this movie takes a huge downfall for me. Okay. One of the reasons I wanted to, to watch this movie was because of this character that they promote called Rot Creep. He's, he's never in this movie. He is literally in this movie for two fucking minutes. And I was like, I'm like, come on, man. Like this, this isn't, this less is more things not going to work for this movie. I want this character to be in here, you know, and, and chasing him. And it, it doesn't even really chase him. Like, basically, what they do is, without giving too many spoilers, which I probably already did, is, is they, they, Max gets knocked out, he gets tied to the bed, and then we're giving a very, given a very quick background history on this rot creep character where he's confined into this house, and every year, you know, if he's not fed a person, then he can go outside the realm of these, those four walls, okay? So, and, or they're gonna come and, and kill Avery or, her brother, okay? So they have to feed him a soul, right? which is why they kind of lured Max in. Well, Max escapes, and then, like, I, it's just, I've seen other movies that do this, and I get it's low budget, but anyone, anyone could have escaped from the boardings in this house. They've got this door, it's just a straight knob, there's no dead bolts or anything and it's got a chain around the doorknob anyone who is panicking <laughs> in this situation would smash through that door in a fucking second yet for some reason he can't bust that doorknob off to <laughs> free himself from this house i'm thinking are you fucking kidding me like i i get it it's low budget and we have certain things we have to accept but I'm like, come on, guys. Like, at least make the door look fortified. Like, I just, it's just little things like this. The fact that this rot creep guy, you want to see what rot creep looks like? I'll show you for the, for the minute and a half that he's actually in this movie. This is what he looks like. You see this? This is kind of what he looks like. I could be rot creep. It's just a, a, a ripoff of that clown from American Horror Story. And you know, I'm not gonna knock the makeup because he looked cool, the teeth looked real, but his mouth never opened, so you could tell it was just a mask. In fact, there's a, a, a one scene from behind his head where you could actually see the glue sticking his mouth on. And you know what? It's low budget, I get it. I totally get it, okay? But I just wanted more of him. If you're gonna have him 
as like the creature in this movie, you have to show more of them. <sighs> I just don't get it. And their use of strobe lights in this movie. They have a warning at the very beginning of this movie that certain scenes in this movie might give people seizures from the strobe lights, but the strobe lights don't make any fucking sense as to why they're even there. What is Because when Max escapes and he goes into this, this room full of mirrors, it's like strobe light central. Like, I, don't, I, I was trying to figure out what the fuck was going on. Like, was rotten or, or rot creep at the, at the door with the, the light flickering on and off? Like, going like that? Is that why there's strobe lights there? Like, I, I don't get it. You, do you know what I mean? But, <sighs> this movie's not all bad, though. The camera work is fantastic because this house is not very big, all right? And they are very confined in certain scenes. Like the, the, the sidewalk scene in the first act, I mean, they have tons of room to move around. But when you get into the house, I mean, the living room, the, the stairwell, the, the bedroom, you know, even the basement, it's, it's very tight. So the use of the, the camera work, I really did appreciate that. So whoever the cameraman was on this film, bravo to you, because you fucking nailed it, okay? And again, I don't have any problem with the acting. It's just the writing of this movie and the certain situations that they're put in and the fact that they can't break out of this fucking house that looks like it's made with paper mache I mean anyone could have busted that fucking door down it's just there's just I don't know and the fact that this rot creep is only in the movie for like two minutes and this house is so fucking small like the chase scenes like he should be all over these guys he's, he's supposed to be eating th these people and he doesn't like and it, this other thing is like you know if he touches you, he'll he'll rot you from the outside in. Okay, so he's he's grabbed, you know, Max. He he's grabbed Rudy. Okay, and they have these, and wherever he grabs them on the face or the hands or the or the chest, it's got these, you know, it, it, it's gone black and almost looks like burn marks, but it's like rotted flesh supposed to be, but they never show any pain, like literally Max's arms from his elbows down to his hands are pitch black supposed to be with rotted flesh but he just he just moves around like it, it just they don't show any pain at all rudy gets gets like grabbed by him you know what i mean he ends up dying but i mean he never shows any fucking pain even avery's brother when when he you know goes to attack uh max so that they can tie him to the bed he pulls his shirt up and he's got this huge piece of rot on his stomach and his in his chest it's oozing pus, but he shows no pain. I'm like, <laughs> I don't get it. These guys should be like screaming and wincing in discomfort. And they just don't. They just, I don't know. I don't know. Why? Poorly written. <laughs> I guess I... Don't go on INDB and look at the rating system because it fucking pisses me off. I'm telling you straight up, it's a 5 out of 10, maybe a 5.5. That's probably being generous. I might get some actual critics in here that are ripped me on giving it that. But I did appreciate the effort of the camera work, and the acting was fairly decent, which I've said 100 times already. So anyways, listen, this movie is out now. It's called For Those Who Walk Away. It's got a lot wrong with it, but it is a low-budget horror movie filmed in a very tight location. It's just, there's so many things wrong with it that could have made it better. Anyways, go watch it for yourself, okay? And then please come back here and let me know what you think about it. And for God's sakes, don't look at the rating system on IMDb. All right, guys? Those who walk away may be worth a one-time watch, although I'm probably going to get ripped in the comments for saying that. But listen, I always tell you to go watch the movie and then you can make your own decision. So do that. Come back here. Let me know what you think, guys. And as always, stay